Hello, and welcome to my tutorial series on how to make a 2D platformer in Unity. In the previous video, we've learned how to add animation to our character. And we just put on this simple idle animation right here where he just bounces around if he stands still. In this video, we're going to add a run animation to bring some life to our character as he moves about the game. Let's begin. First thing we have to do is we're going to start in our assets folder, open up our animations folder, and here, as last time, we have our player animator, which is right here. And if this isn't open, you can go up to window, go down to animation, click animator, and this will open up. And right here is where we have our player idle animation. So we're going to create another animation. We're going to go right click, create, and then go to animation. And we're going to simply call this animation run. And now we're going to take this and we're going to drag it into our animator. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to click on player. We're going to open up our run animation. And I promised last time this would be a little neater. Let's see if I can accomplish that. We'll just leave that right there for now. And we're going to go to our virtual guy or whatever character you're using. And right here is where we have the pixel art for our run animation, just like we had it for our idle animation. So first click on where it says run 32 by 32. And if you look up here, the pixels per unit are at 100. And so remember way back when we had to change this for our idle and we changed it to 16. And then it's going to say unapplied import settings. We're going to apply them so they get applied to all these little guys. So now this one is going to be at 16 pixels per unit, just like our idle was. So going back to this, we're going to first make sure we're still clicked on player. Let's raise our animation window just a little bit. I'm going to click on our, oh, it keeps on clicking. We want to click on player, change it back to run, make sure that it's clicked on player and it says run here and not idle. We're going to click on our little guy, click there. And we're going to put our animations in here. And just to recap, I skipped it this time. Remember to highlight them all. Left click on the first one. Shift left click on the last one and it will highlight them all and you'll be able to drag them in just like we did for our idle animation. So I'm going to go over here and I'm just going to click down and now we can see all our little guys, but they're really scrunched up here. And if you didn't know, you can spread this out a little bit by with your mouse wheel. Now we can see a little better, but the time, the time doesn't change. And that's because it's at 60 frames per, uh, per at a 60 frames rate. And so we're going to change it to 30, just like we did with our idle animation. And now if I move the mouse wheel a little bit. Everybody got spread out a little better. So we're going to take this. And I'm just going to click on the tab here and I'm going to drag it down here with these guys. And I'm going to go up to our scene. And I'm going to hit play. And as you can see, here's our run animation going. But our guy isn't moving because we have to attach our animations to each other. And also we have to put it into our code, which we'll get onto right now. So the first thing that's going to happen with adding it to our script is I'm just going to explain something briefly. So here is our here's our player game object. And in it, we have these components. We have a player controller and we have an animator. And the one thing about these components is that they tend to not know the other exists. The player script does not really know that the animator is there. We have to call the animator into our player script just just like here with this rigid body here's here's the rigid body right here it's right above it but we had to create in our um code here 
in our player controller script, we had to create a public variable for that rigid body. We go over here. So we're gonna have to do the same thing for the animator. So go, if you haven't done already, go to projects, assets, scripts, and open up your player controller. And then you're going to make another public variable and capital A, animator. And make sure it's animator, not animation, because it's two different things. So, and we're just gonna simply call it anim. It's a pretty common name for what people call their animators. So we're gonna hit save. We're gonna go back to Unity. There we go. And right here is in our script is anim. And there's nothing there. We have to attach our animator to it. We can simply just grab our player, drag him over, and boom, we can now call our animator into our script to use to attach code so that when our character runs, his animation plays. So now we're going to connect our animations. So if I go back up here to the animator, um, last time or in the last video, I said that the animator and how it works will make a little more sense once we get more animations into our game, and hopefully it does. So here is entry. This is where we're hitting play. And once we hit play, then we automatically go into our idle animation. And this, the idle animation is orange. Every time, the very first animation that happens after the game begins is called the default animation and it will always be orange and the other animations will be gray and this hour right here is called a transition anytime either going from the entry to an animation or an animation to an animation it's called a transition you transition from one animation to the other and right now um our player you know there's no transition between our two animations we have to make them so right click on player idle you'll see right here play i'm sorry make transition and simply connect it to our run animation and now i'm going to take this i'm actually going to bring this block down here i'm going to just raise it up a little bit and i'm going to show you something watch when i hit play so if you saw what happened real quickly it played the idle and then it played the run right after it and it stopped. And that's because there's no transition back to idle. I'll, I'll hit this again. Okay, it happens kind of fast, so watch it. So yeah, it went from idle to run and it can't go back. It doesn't have a transition back. So we have to make another transition that when he stops running, he goes back to his idle animation. So we're gonna make another transition. I'm gonna connect it there. And now watch what happens. So he just goes back and forth between the two animations because there's nothing telling him, there's no, there's no condition for him to uh, stop one and start the other. And that's what we have to code or place into our game. So I'm gonna hit this again. So the way you create your oftentimes called conditions or parameters for your animations is you click on the transition arrow. And right here on settings, just click this so it uh, comes down. And you'll see here's our here's our three animations. Here's our player. I'm sorry, our two animations. Here's our player idle. It goes to run. It goes back to player idle. And these right here show what length of time it's going to transition from one to the other. So actually, we're going to just make the exit time zero. And we'll go into exit time another time. It's it's oops. And uh, we're going to go into exit time another time because it uh, it's it's pretty specific to certain things and we don't need to really have it there for the purposes of what we're doing right now. And now we have a transition duration, how long it takes to go from one to the other. And let's see how this looks, actually. And actually, let me see the settings. Oops, drop and let's see how it looks when I place it to zero. When I, then so it was 0.25 seconds for it to transition from one to the other, and this makes it more immediate. I think I'm gonna like the 0.25 seconds. Um, and that doesn't look so bad. So, so in this one, he transitions immediately, 
and the other one it happened sort of gradually i think i'm going to keep the immediate one and i don't like it i'll just change it back so anyway back to what we were talking about um so now we have to create our conditions for our animations and if you go here and you click on parameters you have layers and you have parameters we're going to add a parameter to our animation and now there's many different types depending on how we want to do our condition float integer bool or trigger so um sometimes and maybe we'll do this in a, a with another animation sometimes you use let's say the speed of the character as a condition for uh, him going from idle to run for example when he's at idle he'll be at zero and then we'll say when his velocity or his speed becomes greater than zero he'll transition to his run we don't have our we don't have our player controller set using a velocity so we're not going to do that we're just going to make this very simple we're going to call we're going to use what is called a bool and we're just going to call our bool running and so a bool is simply a condition encoding of saying that something is true or not true or true or false so for the for our for our bool the condition is is the player running or is he not running if he is running then it's we want him to play the run animation and if he's not running then we want to make him be idle so then i'm going to add here it is so go to conditions I, I did that a little fast under conditions it was add so i'm adding our bool right here it's just populating it if we had if we had more than if we had more than one you know we'd be able to go into this drop down menu and we'll see other animations where we'll use this so here's our bool called running and if running is true if he is running i hope this doesn't get confusing with me saying running and not running um so and look here if i click on it i can actually say make it true or false so if he is running if this is true then he transitions from idle to running now i'm going to go to the other transition going back and then i'm going to go over here i'm going to add our bool and now I'm going to change it to false. So if he isn't running, if running is false, then he's going to transition to his idle animation. So I'll try this from the top. A uh, bool is a condition by which something is either true or false. I should probably not have used not running. It's either true or false. The the player is either running, his running is either true or false. When it is true that he's running, we want him to go from idle to run. And then when he is not running, we want his animation to transition from run to idle. And I didn't fix this, so we'll put our exit time at zero and we'll put our transition duration at zero just like it is for the other one. Is it both the same? Yes. So now that we've created these conditions in our code, I'm sorry, in our animator, we have to code this into our script, which we'll do right now. So here we are in our code and we're gonna go down to our void update here. And inside our if statement, remember these, we, we said if we hit the D key, you know, he'll, he'll move in these directions. If we hit the A key, he'll move in these directions. And we're going to create another line right under him here. And we're going to put anim dot set bool. Then we're going to create a parentheses. um exclamation points not exclamation points quotation marks and then inside that we're going to put the word running and now this is the running that we put back here in our transition where's our animator into our parameters here so whatever so whatever we wrote here 
we have to write it exactly like that in our code. So we wrote running all in lowercase. We have to write running all in lowercase here. Otherwise, the code won't know what to find. So if you used a capital R, you would have to spell it the exact same way. And then we're going to put a comma and we're going to put the word true and we're going to end it with a semicolon. And then we're going to take this and we're going to copy it. I'm just going to hit control C and then we're going to put the exact same thing, control V, into our code for our A key. So basically what we're doing here is here's anim. This is our this is our public created, I'm sorry, publicly created variable here. We're calling it down here. We're saying we're we're calling the animator. We're saying in the animator there's a set bool, which is the bool we created back here for our transition. There's this set bool and it's called running. And if and if we're hitting the D key, running is true. And we're telling it the same thing for the A key. If we hit the D key or the A key, the running bool is true and we want to play our running animation. Now we're also going to add a little more coding knowledge to our repertoire and we're going to put an else here. So right here and we're, we'll get to actually we'll just put our else down here. Like that and we'll get to else in a second. So we we discussed the if statement. If we do if we do this, if we hit this key, this happens. And then you can make it in sort of a branching or tree where you can create other conditions. If we hit D code, this happens. Else if we hit the A code, I'm sorry, the A key code, key code A rather, this happens. And then we have else. So it's saying if we do this, do this else if we do this and if it's not either of those two things it becomes it, it it becomes a default value which is going to be our um our anim dot simple parentheses running comma false in it with a semicolon that was slow because i have a lot of things on the desk and i'm trying to do this time to type off to the side sorry that was seemed a little clunky so now just to recap we're, we're saying if we hit our d key do this if we hit our a key do this and but then if we're not doing either of those things the default state is that running equals false and remember running equals false means that it becomes transitions to our idle animation. So we're going to hit save. And then we're going to go back into Unity. So before we hit play, we need to go over to our project window real quick. And right here in our animations folder, Click on your run animation and if it's not, if it hasn't been checked already, make sure you check loop time. Otherwise, when you actually, I'll show you. Go back to the animator and I'm going to hit play. So if the loop time isn't played, when we move them, he just plays the animation once. The animation isn't looping like it is down here. So go to here. Oh, let's turn off the game first. Go to run hit loop time, then we can go ahead and hit play. And now our character is running along. And he does it when he jumps too. We'll fix that in the future. So as always, thank you for watching. Like this video, subscribe to my channel, follow me on Facebook and Twitter, and support me on Patreon. All links are in the description below. See you next time.